and welcome to our regular town council meeting. Today is Monday, April 4th, 2022. The time is 7.10 in the council chambers. Um, before we get going with the, the, the regular uh, meeting today, uh, we are going to be uh, recognizing our, our colleague, uh, Joseph Bosco. On behalf of the town council, um, we are all deeply saddened with the passing of Councillor Joey Bosco. Enfield has lost a very unselfish person who has dedicated many years of service to do what he felt was right for the town. Joe was extremely passionate, kind, and a humble man. He was never at a loss for words. He would agree to disagree, but always being respectful and would never let friendship get in that way. Thank you, Joe, for your love and dedication to Enfield and for your friendship to everyone. Our condolences go out to his family, his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and we are all sorry for your loss and grateful to the lives that Joe touched. The life given to us by nature is short, but the memory of a life is eternal. We thank you, Councillor Joseph Bosco. Now, I would like to ask uh, Donna Suzik, come up, our former deputy mayor, uh, to share some thoughts, please. And welcome. Nice to see you. I served with Joey for eight years on the council. Served maybe in a little adversarial position as four years on the board. Um, Joey's always an honest man. But through the years, I've had the honor to nominate Joey to be the mayor, which he humbly declined to introduce him as Enfield's Republican of the Year and to make sure that he was happy with the seat that he was in. In case y'all don't know, Joey is very fussy about what seat he's in. I don't know what you're going to do now. I think we need to modify the dais. And I sat for days looking at old films and trying to understand, you know, Joey, he just, he's an enigma. My husband says he's a very complicated man. How do I find the right words to pay tribute to Joey? I thought to me, commitment to family and community. Honor the past, tend to the present, and prepare for the future. I think that says it about Joey. This would be Joey's 15th year of service as the District 1 Town Councilor for the Town of Enfield. It's a long time, it's a lot. Thank you, Joey. Thank you to his family for sharing him with us. And then I thought, what makes Joey special? <laughs> um, I think, it's, for me, it was a destiny that Joey would become a great Town Councilor. Joey had the knowledge of Enfield's past. He always knew the who, what, when, where, and why of why we were doing something. And then we would all ask, but how do we do it better? And that's when Joey would get to work. He would always analyze everything, read everything, talk to the people. He always took every phone call that everybody, everybody called him right directly on his cell phone. I, I, I found that, you know, amazing. But he would also rely on his knowledge and his experience. I, I, the man was a wealth of knowledge. There was nothing that he didn't know something about. I mean, you could talk to him about everything. That, I think, was the key of how he could lead us, that once we could make a decision, he could, as Bob said, he led everybody, and he made everybody 
you know, be comfortable with what we were doing moving forward. Joey's influence on people and communities will live on. We're all better people for having known Joey, and Enfield is a better community for what Joey has done. Joey always had a way of saying what needed to be said in a clear and concise manner. People would say he spoke from his heart, but for me, when Joey spoke, he was the smartest man in the room. Joey, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please stand. Councillor Sakala. Um, I'd like to have a moment of silence tonight in honor of Joey. Joey was an asset to this community and he will be missed. His passing is a loss to our entire town. So let's keep Joey's family and friends in our prayers and our thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. Pledge of, Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sheila, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Here. Mayor Crisati. Here. Councillor Despard. Here. Councillor Finger. Here. Councillor Hopkins. Councillor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mangini. Here. Councillor Pisner. Here. Councillor Santanella. Here. And Councillor Ungeyer. That's eight members present and two absent. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers and to my left in the audience's right, exit through the doors, go downstairs and into the parking lot. Minutes of the preceding meetings. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes of the special meeting on March 21st, 2022? Motion. Uh, so Councilor moved. Finger and Councilor uh, Mangini, the second. Any discussions, deletions, additions? By a show of hands, all in favor? Against, abstentions, uh, eight in favor, none against, no abstentions. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes of the regular meeting on March 21st, 2022? So moved. Uh, Councillor uh, Santanella. So and moved. second will be Councillor Mangini. Any discussion, ad uh, additions or deletions? By a show of hands, all in favor? Okay. Against, abstentions, uh, eight in favor, none against, no abstentions. There are no special guests tonight. Uh, public communications. Any person wishing to speak in front of the council, please state your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes to speak in the first round and three minutes for any subsequent round if needed. Uh, we ask please refrain from personalities and we ask that everyone be respectful uh, in the chambers. Uh, okay. Is there anybody who would like to speak? Yes. Hi. Amanda Marquez, Hoover Lane. New Britain, Norwich, Hartford, Bridgeport, New London, Waterbury, Manchester, New Haven, Wyndham, and Thompson. Why am I mentioning these towns? These school districts have the lowest accountability index scores in the state. 
So again, why am I mentioning this? Well, Enfield has most recently joined these towns on the Connecticut State Department of Education Alliance Districts list. What exactly does this mean? We sit in the 21st worst performing school district in the state of Connecticut. Enfield, Plainfield, and Stratford have been added to the 2022-2023 Alliance list, which is comprised of the 33 lowest performing districts out of the 200 statewide. This designation is determined through a district performance index score, which is calculated using a formula that includes student proficiency levels in English language arts, mathematics, and science. The state computes the weighted average of the accountability index scores from 2017 through 2019 and sorts from low to high based on the collective scores and then selects the 33 lowest. Not exactly the list you can be proud to be a part of. Keep in mind the scores that they are basing us on are pre-COVID, so that cannot be used as an excuse for low scores. So with the designation of an Alliance District, Enfield is eligible for Alliance District funding. This funding comes as a portion of the town's education cost sharing grant. And as always with funding, it is contingent on the school district's compliance with the Alliance program requirements. These funds must be used to support new initiatives rather than supplementing existing costs. Continuation of these funds over the five year period of a district's designation is contingent on the district's ability to annually exceed, meet and adjust its goals as outlined in the Alliance District's plan. In order in order to qualify for such funds, the plan must include objectives and performance targets that are in part based on student academic performance data. The plan must also include strategies to improve student performance. It can include, but is not limited to the following strategies. Tiered interventions for schools within the district based on the need of specific school, K through three foundational reading programs, additional learning time, either in the form of an extended day or extended year, training for staff, administrators and teachers, et cetera. So what is Enfield's plan and strategy going forward to bring our DPI scores up and get us out of this unacceptable low rank status? What have we been doing in previous years to counteract our dropping scores? How much additional funding will our district receive from being designated an Alliance District? We allocate $72 million annually to our eight town schools already with the superintendent requesting a budget increase tonight of 2.31%. I think that this town should request a definitive plan as to what we are doing to enhance our scores before we allocate any additional taxpayer dollars to the schools. I've been attending board meetings since August. Not once has our superintendent or board of ed even mentioned where we rank as a district. Why hasn't this been brought up for discussion at a meeting this year? Surely our superintendent must have knowledge of how we are performing as a district. Our town's district performance index has consistently decreased every year since 2016, placing us well below the state target score of 75, with our math scores sitting especially low with a DPI of 59. Not only has the school board and superintendent not brought this to the public's attention, but when parents have specifically brought up this during public comment and question, <clears throat> question the curriculum and DPI scores, they were ignored. No answers as to how or why we are ranking so low. I would think that academics would be part of one of the most important topics for the board to discuss. Eight months I've sat and listened to Mr. Dresick and the school board comment about silly sock day, pajama day, virtual purse bingo, and walkathons. Honestly, the board member comments are a glorified reading of a school newsletter. Who holds the Board of Ed and Superintendent accountable for answers? We cannot continue down this path, following, allowing our district to fall behind and rank in the bottom 15% of the state. We've talked about how wonderful it has been to be able to bring in children from other surrounding towns to give them open choice and a better education, but how can we tout that now? Soon we will be the ones busing kids out of Enfield to allow them the opportunity for a better education. District enrollment has steadily declined from 2018, where we had 5,100 students enrolled to 4,800 students enrolled currently. What are we offering new families looking to move to Enfield? Because we all know that a family with young children exploring towns to move to always looks to the school system first. I've stated before, I pulled my children from this school system for many reasons, and now this just confirms my decision even more. When I sit down to try and list the benefits of re-enrolling my children in the Enfield public school system, the list is short to say the least. I honestly have lost all faith in the leadership of our school system, the direction our district is going in, and the curriculum we are teaching our children. I'm not now turning to this council in hopes that you will help the parents in holding the district accountable and finally getting answers as to how we are going to do better academically. This isn't just a school board problem, this is a town problem. Mr. Dresick's budget increase request should absolutely be put on hold until we know more about the additional funds Enfield will be receiving from the state and what those funds will be used for. Our school ranking impacts our town as a whole. Our students are, our schools are failing our children, our school leadership continues to put their head in the sand, and when will the parent and student concerns be of the utmost importance? Are we waiting till we are the lowest ranking district because we don't have much further to go. I'm asking this council to put our children first and work together to make our schools something to be proud of again. Okay. Thank you. Um, is there anyone else who would like to address the council? Okay. 
Ryan Moore, 10 right field drive. Uh, I don't, I don't know what to say other than um, my condolences to the Bosco family. Uh, Joey's loss is 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 huge to Enfield, um, and obviously even bigger to his family. So um, it's it's a it's a horrible thing, you know. And they've had a lot of tragedy in the last couple of years. So uh, I just want them to know that we're all thinking and praying about them. Uh, <clears throat> so normally I have prepared marks. I've been going up to the, the school board meetings for the last year and, um, and talking. And as Amanda said, really not getting many answers. And it's very frustrating. Um, not getting answers from the superintendent and not getting answers from the board members. Uh, sometimes we're met with derision or, or just dismissiveness. And it's just it's very frustrating at this point. As parents, uh, I, I didn't send my kids to Enfield Public Schools. I, I wish I could have. I sent them to private school because when I looked into uh, Enfield schools, when I came here over a decade ago, Enfield schools were not bad schools. They were pretty good schools. That's not the case anymore. And that's a problem. It's a big problem. And nobody's doing anything about it. I, I, I just don't see anything being done. It's very, very frustrating. I wish. I could take the money, get my money back, or, or send my kids to a school that I believed in. But I can't. And it's, this is a problem, and no one's doing anything. Who holds the board accountable? Who holds the superintendent accountable? They don't answer us. They say nothing. And it, it, I cannot tell you how frustrating it is. And there's other parents. I've been coming up to speak for a long time. And there's other parents that want to, but they talk to us because they're afraid to come either speak publicly. I'm not a public speaker. Or they're afraid that, you know, what will happen to their kids, what the blowback they'll get from other kids or from the administration or whatever. This is a big problem. And somebody needs to be up front and talk about it, say something. If not from the board, I'm, I'm coming here. Can you guys get answers? Because nobody is doing anything. Amanda just listed. These are the facts. We are not doing very well. And we've got two years where we haven't gotten aggregate scores. What do you think has happened in the last two years? Do you think we're better? Does anybody believe that? Because it's not the case. So I'm asking you guys to somebody do something. Stand up for this town, please. Is there anybody else who would like to address the council? Is there anybody else? Second time? Okay, I declare public communications uh, closed and over. Uh, next, Councilor Communications. Mayor Crisaldi? Yes. Go ahead, Wait, Councilor Biagini. Go ahead. Thank you. You know, I, I do I want to make, make a comment, comment here, here. Uh, in support of our Enfield Public Schools, our superintendent, our staff, teachers, and school board. You know, people look at these statistics and comment and analyze, but I think people need to also understand that beyond the numbers, you've got real people in the schools, mental health professionals, uh, medical professionals, uh, teachers that go above and beyond their jobs. And when Superintendent Dresick talks about silly socks and leprechaun day, all of that is to build a little more um, fun and excitement in the, in the kids because that's what they need. They need to have that added extra in addition to the education. And quite honestly, our school educational system is premier. I'm a realtor. People do come to Enfield. One of the main reasons is for the school system. So I'm going to stand behind our teachers, our um, staff, our superintendent, and our school board, because they are all working as a team, doing the best job they know how to make the best for our students. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Councilor Santanella. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
there's quite a few things on my list, so I'm going to take a little time, so please bear with me. Um, first of all, um, I did spend some time at Enfield High School uh, this weekend for the uh, 56th Annual Arts Festival, and I have to say I was completely impressed with um, the work that the Women's Club did to organize that event and the cooperation that they received from the Enfield Cultural Arts Commission. Um, I just have to say the there is a lot of talent here in Enfield and um, the portfolio class that the seniors did was really just um, pretty impressive and something something to behold. So uh, good job to all of those folks. Um, coming up this week, there's some things going on in uh, District 2. Um, the 4th of July Town Celebration uh, Committee is going to be having its 16th annual dinner dance at the Old Country Banquet. Um, there are still tickets available. This is a great event um, to support a great activity here on the Town Green, which we all enjoy. And so um, there are tickets still available and it will be a good time and there's a lot of good food. So uh, I would encourage people to come out and enjoy that. Um, there are some public hearings that are going on at both of our uh, fire districts in uh, in Enfield Fire District number one. There are nominations for members of the um, fire commission. That meeting is going to be held on April 7th at 730 at the um, firehouse at 200 Phoenix Avenue. Um, anyone interested in participating or wanting to be on the commission, uh, you have to be um, nominated and you need to have someone uh, second your nomination to be put on the ballot. Uh, the Thompsonville Fire District is also having a public hearing on April 13th uh, to uh, discuss with the public the purchase of a much needed uh, new piece of apparatus, as well as to go over um, their 2022 and 2023 budget. I, I wanted to take a minute also tonight to um, give a shout out and a pat on the back to uh, Loaves and Fishes. Last month, Loaves and Fishes served over 5,000 meals to families in our community who are most in need. And this organization is made up of a number of volunteers, many who have been there for years. Um, and they have done so uh, at the direction of Maya Matthews, herself a lifelong resident of Enfield, who I know many of us here know and have a lot of respect for. Um, there have been some unfortunate comments made about Loaves and Fishes at one point, someone referred to them as an un-American organization. And I have to tell you, I'm pretty upset because I can't think of anything more American and more reflective of what people in our community do, especially people who live in Thompsonville, than giving hungry people food. And so people who choose to pick this organization to defame need to find something better to do with their time. And anybody who has time to write about it should roll up their sleeves and go over there and serve a food to a hungry person. I think that's a better use of people's time. And to Maya and your staff and all the volunteers who work at Loaves and Fishes, I want to thank you on behalf of the council for all the work that you do to make Enfield a better place. And finally tonight, Mr. Mayor, over the last several months, I've had the opportunity to connect with people of our community in ways that I've never been able to before. And that experience has been an affirmation of something that I always knew to be true, that people of Enfield are good, hardworking, and decent people. We all come from different walks of life, yet we share a common attribute. We all call Enfield our home. And though we have our differences, we have the capacity to put those differences aside when necessary, because we believe in one another and we help each other and we care for one another. I have seen the compassion of a cop on the beat and those volunteers at that soup kitchen. And I've seen the compassion of volunteers all around our community lending a hand to make a difference. And I've seen the bravery of parents who come out to fight for their kids. And while I see, as I'm sure you see, that there are many things that divide us, there are many more that hold us together. And while we're all different, in many ways, we are the same. We are people wanting to feel valued, wanting to be heard, and wanting to be respected, and wanting for a sense of togetherness, and simply wanting to be accepted for who we are. 
Each year during the month of June, communities around the world come together to celebrate pride. This celebration, which started as a recognition of the history of the LGBT community, has evolved into a celebration of the human spirit and human rights and a celebration of our individuality. Grounded in a belief that while we are all part of one human race, it is the things that truly make us different that make us special. Pride is an opportunity for people to come together to support, encourage, and celebrate those differences. And I think Enfield is ready to join that celebration. And so tonight, with your support, Mr. Mayor, I am asking the council to prepare whatever instrument is necessary, either policy or resolution, to be presented to the community and voted on by the council that would permit the flying of a pride flag over the town green starting on June 1st and ending on June 30th of this year and every year in support of the LGBT community as a symbol of our unity, a message of inclusion, and an affirmation of the belief that we are better together. And that no matter who you are or where you are from or who you love, you have something special to offer all of us and you are welcome here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Santanella. Points well taken. Absolutely. We will uh, take care of business there. Thank you. Any other councillor communications? Councillor Pisner? Yep. Um, I, too, went to the 56th annual art show. Um, I've gone in the past as well, even before I was a counselor. Um, I've always supported our schools, and I will continue to do that. Um, I want to speak a little bit about the alliance because I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's something we should be proud of. I do agree with Mrs. Marquez and Mr. Moore. I don't think it's something we strive for. Um, I can only speak for myself and how education has changed. There was a time when my girls went to this school, this school system, and I was extremely active. I was in the school every day. We were like the unpaid paras back then. We went in and whatever the teacher needed help with, we did. Parents' hands are tied now because they can't go into the school and do that anymore. And this was even pre-COVID. I think Sandy Hook really changed it. So I don't want to blame teachers and I don't want to blame parents. Because it is a community that we need to come together and find what's best for our kids. I love this town. And I've never had a problem with the education in this town for my girls. And both my girls are extremely su successful, partly for their teachers and partly because education started at home, too. And my husband and I took it extremely serious. And now we do that for our granddaughter. So I think together we have to come up with an idea where we work together and not apart. The arguing, the name calling, the fist throwing, and, and I'm using that as just a, a, it needs to stop. And we need to work together to make Enfield, like John just said, the town that we are proud to live in and that we want to call home. Let's think of Joey tonight. Because Joey would have found a workaround. So we need to do that. We need to come together and stop with the separation and the differences. It's not all the teacher's fault, and it's not all the parents' fault. We've got to find some common ground. And if I can help in any way, please let me know. Because I do have a grandchild in the school system, and, and soon I'll have a grandson. And I'm proud that I have a daughter who teaches in this great town, and I'm proud of her. So please, I think we need to come together. And I do thank the parents for coming and speaking, because you've always spoke so graciously. You've, you've never caused a problem. And I've always been, you've always been considerate. And I want you to keep coming to remind us of what we have to do. But I'd like to see more parents come up, too, and get involved, because that's what we need. 
So I wasn't planning on speaking, but I had to say something. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Ludwig. Quick. I just want to, you know, obviously honor my longtime friend, Joe Bosco. Uh, you know, it's, you know, he's my friend. And when you have friends in life, that's the greatest word you can call another person is your friend. I wish his family some solace because I know what they've been through over the last certainly six months, but clearly last month. And I mean, I think anyone who's been through this process with hospice, those hospice nurses are angels on earth. They do a tremendous job through what is the most difficult time in anyone's life. And if you've ever been through it, it is brutal. And those women, mostly women, I know there's some, but mostly are fantastic. They do a great job. And I mean, uh, I know what they went, and I know what his family went through in the last certainly month and a half. And um, again, he's my friend. I'm going to miss him. I'm going to miss him calling me and already telling me what to do every morning. And, you know, I, I think, like I said, when you have good friends, it's tough when you lose them. And um, again, I wish his family some solace. But also, I think just recognize that hospice nurses really are very, very special people. Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple of announcements that I would uh, like to share with everyone. Uh, the first uh, announcement that I'd like to share everyone is uh, last week um, over at JFK and over at uh, Enfield High School, the North Central Chamber of Commerce uh, honored students uh, with the Act of Kindness Awards reception. Uh, and I took part uh, in that ceremony. I'd like to recognize that JFK, Hannah Ruby and Ethan Simak and at Enfield High School, we had Avery Breglia, Chris Sale, Morgan Blaze, and Sophie Trossett. Uh, congratulations to each one of those recipients. And I know that throughout the year, uh, the North Central Chamber has recognized students uh, who have demonstrated uh, their kindness and whatever uh, teacher uh, recommended them for. Also, uh, just want to mention that each one of these students gets to choose uh, a charity because a donation is put in their name that goes towards this charity. And, uh, you know, it's very uh, touching to hear that where the charities are, are going to. So they're very special people. I know there's many students that have been recognized throughout the year. So uh, congratulations to each and every uh, one of them. You know, talking about education, uh, I am going to uh, just mention that I am a firm believer and I am supportive of the Enfield Public Schools, all the teachers that are involved, people that are on the Board of Education. You go from <coughs> the top down to the bottom. Uh, I had four children grow, go through the uh, school system. Um, I'm very impressed with everything uh, that they have done. All my children are uh, successful uh, in everything that they have done. Uh, and once again, the people that, you know, that come up and, and state what you, what you have to say, uh, we hear what you're saying. You know, we got to work together, work together to make this community a good place. And I will entertain any conversation that anybody wants to have. Give me a call. I'll sit down and talk to you. The other thing that I'm just going to mention um, is uh, a matter of uh, government efficiency that I'd like to bring up. Uh, in evaluating our, our subcommittee structures uh, here in, uh, in the town, it would be uh, my preference and uh, eliminate the Developmental Services Subcommittee. And, and speaking to um, the directors, um, the, we, we, there's just too much um, duplication. So with recent organization and the separation of the two departments, the Economic and Community Development Department already has a commission in place. And so this commission is looking for more of a formal role and responsibility. So like I just stated, to avoid duplication and to ensure clear messaging, uh, we should have one group to do that. So I am uh, formally making that recommendation uh, tonight uh, to the town manager for that. And I, and I, you know, when we look at uh, making things more efficient here in town, um, 
this is uh, another step towards that. And the last thing that I just want to uh, mention is the Hartford Foundation for the Public Giving established community funds for 29 surrounding towns in the region, and Enfield is included in that. And the purpose of the community funds is to support residents in taking ownership around the needs of the town and to encourage inclusive civic engagement. So the Enfield Community Fund is seeking advisory committee nominees. So everybody who hears this and you want to become involved, you can apply one either at the public library, you can go to the senior center, um, or you can go to uh, selectionecf at gmail.com to submit your, your application and tell them of uh, your interest. The deadline is April 30th. I just wanted to uh, state that uh, because this is a, a very valuable organization uh, here in town. And that's all I have to say for tonight. Okay. Is there anybody else? All right. Okay. All right, mo moving ahead, um, town manager report. Good evening. Just the first item that I've listed so that the public can follow along uh, involves our Board of Assessment Appeals. They began the hearings today downstairs in the Enfield room. They will continue through this week and as needed. Uh, what we're seeing though is that due to the volume and the time constraints that they are asking the town to file on their behalf an extension so that they can continue to deliberate on those appeals that are made through the month of May. So, so that anyone who is following assessment appeals or has an appeal that is coming before them, they can understand the process. We will be filing that letter with the Office of Policy and Management, which will allow them to continue their work through May. And uh, there's no action needed, but I think it's just important for the town council to know when, when items like that happen. Uh, moving on, the second item that I'd like to cover tonight is an update on the ARPA funding. Uh, we did front load um, funding on item G that you're gonna see later in your agenda. And that is to use the design services for the town farm road multi-use path, which has been in the works for almost two years. Uh, this is gonna be funded by a state grant, a LOTSIP grant, but we are responsible for the soft costs for design. So that's $80,000 that we're asking the town council to consider later on in the agenda, which will allow that project to flow and really kind of get started without waiting through the budget process. Overall, we've been spending a lot of time constructing the budget, which you will hear about on Wednesday night. There are a lot of moving points, and some of them were alluded to by Superintendent Drazik. We've been having uh, many conversations across the town and education sides because we know that it's important for Enfield and for both sides of the government house in order to work together and leverage all of those dollars. So even as late as today, as we were having conversations about how to present the data to you, we had another late breaking announcement that additional funds are coming through from um, Congressman Courtney informed us of a resiliency bill that is going to target specifically school construction issues, repairs, air filtration, um, boiler repairs, several of which are on our agenda to accomplish for various schools. So at this point, we're constantly almost like a financial shell game trying to figure out how to stretch all of those dollars, which ones can be ARPA, which ones can be from fund balance, which ones can be used for some of their ESSER and COVID funds on the, on the school side, what of our ARPA funds? So I'm not sure that we're going to have a complete picture for Wednesday night, but we're going to do the best that we can to give you a slate of options as to the path forward as you move toward your budget discussions and deliberations uh, amongst yourselves. I also think it's important to note that we have to have community input. And that's one of the provisions of the ARPA federal guidelines. So as of tomorrow, we will be, actually, I think it's live now, but on our website, if you go to the Town of Enfield website, there is an ARPA tab now, and you will be able to click there and go directly to a community survey 
where you will be asked some of your preference questions. There are a lot of items on there that some have been suggested by you, some of your department colleagues here in the building, and from members of the public. So if you see something that you think is, is very specific, uh, it may have been from a resident. So we put anything on that we received onto the survey. We are going to have that out, too, for several weeks. Hard copies will also be available at the library and the senior center. You could also call the town manager's office, and we can furnish hard copies. We've also asked the faith community to participate, and many of them are including it in their bulletins, the link uh, this coming Sunday and beyond, so that we can reach as many people as possible in the community so that they can have a say in how they see some of these transformational and generational funds being spent uh, throughout the next three years. So more to come on that on Wednesday night, but again, we're open to any ideas and concerns as to how to make those dollars maximize impact here in Enfield. Great. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. I just had a yes. Go ahead. May, through the mayor to the, to the town manager, um, we did submit to the town manager um, our caucus's ideas, and one of the things that we do feel very strongly about is that the residents should be part of the ARPA funds. Um, I strongly feel that this was money that came down from the United States government to our state, to our town. And I don't want us to forget our residents. So I am encouraging everybody to spread the word to go on to the website, give your opinion on how these funds should be spent, and don't, you know, don't short sight yourself because this is your money and it's your way that we should be listening to you on how you want it spent. So please go on that website. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilor Ludwig. So uh, how many uh, appeals do we have, assessment appeals? Did you hear the total number today? 90? 92? I think it's 92, but we did have some people cancel today. So were we able to verify with the system that was used, the software, that that, that can be audited? My understanding, it can be. Checking it with some people. I understand he used the state version of the assessment to, to do some of the assessments. We should audit to make sure this is a ton of appeals, and I think it's going to get worse when people get their car taxes. That it, this this needs to be checked. This is I'm sorry. This is this is beyond someone coming new to the community. I I, I know the system can be audited. I checked into. It. I hope we can. If you can get me that answer, I'd appreciate it. And then you know, for the letter from the chairman today, do we know what other towns do when it comes to recording these meetings? So did we check their surrounding towns? I understand his concern where, again, folks are given fine. Yes, it's a public meeting, so someone's supposed to take minutes. But recording, I understand his concern. So I was just curious what other towns do in our surrounding north central area. You know, the majority of them record. The major, I mean, if they, you know, I wonder if we did that research before responding to them. Thank we you. did. So many of them do record, especially based on revaluation and the volume. So it's, again, you, you have the hearings, and then you come back several weeks later to do the deliberations and make uh, decisions about those assessments. So we did do, I believe the assessor used his listserv today in order to double check. We made some phone calls and we checked in with other communities. So yes, there is definitely a record keeping component, either via Zoom, via recording, or via uh, note taking. Uh, the other thing that we want to just confirm is that all of these meetings are public meetings, and they are in accordance with FOIA. There are two exceptions. One, if a, a appeal was based on any type of personal property, um, those reports are exempt from disclosure, and those would be honored, as well as any personal financial data, such as a corporation or financials that they wanted to share. That, too, is exempt. Those would not be included in any type of um, public forum or Taping. So if someone takes this to superior court, we would we potentially would have to produce the, a tape, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Thank yeah, you. And that is for both the protection of the the town, the appeal board, as well as the residents. So there's right. a record. So is there any concern about ch custody of command, cus you know, chain of custody with the you know now that the town owns that tape? I mean, I I, I mean. I don't think so, based on the oath that everybody has taken in order to serve on that panel. Okay. Okay, thank you. Councillor Finger. Good evening. Uh, through the mayor, to the town manager. Last fall, I talked about on Taylor Road getting those sat, uh, those um, crosswalk signs moved, uh, the solar ones. Mm -hmm. So it's spring, ground soft. I want to see those move, please. Okay. 
Um, I know uh, they got to talk to the traffic officer, but I have a few good suggestions uh, for them. It'd be interesting uh, in hearing them. One would be at JFK, right, right in front of the library, crossing over. That's a very busy street. They can really go there. Um, and there's other schools, too, that are very important. That's why I want to bring this up. I'd like to see if it's possible to get through the ARPA funds some more of those for other locations in, school, in town. You know, the kids' safety is number one in this town, and I think that we need to make sure that um, the crosswalk guards have every tool available to them to make the kids safe to cross the street. You go on South Road, everybody knows they don't do 30. <laughs> um, and I'm... And I'd like to see if, if we can get some of those in an opera fund, if it's, you know, if it's possible okay. somehow. And the other thing, too, is um, going on with uh, Councilor uh, Pisner and is I think um, the taxpayers, yeah, this is their money. I'd like to know what, you know, is in the mind of how we're going to do this, you know, small business or just, she says, residents. You know, I have no objections to doing that. That should be a priority for us. But what is the, you know, what, what are you doing? What are you thinking you know, where do you want to go with this? So that's my request. Thank you. So internally, we've been discussing with all of you uh, mitigation of COVID effect on small businesses. Uh, we've also been discussing the impact on nonprofits. We've been discussing uh, disadvantaged households. And so I think that all of those need parameters attached to them. Uh, and once we have a budget path, I think that those are pieces that we can come back to and revisit, especially after receiving community feedback. So the beauty of this is that this ARPA piece is not running concurrent with your budget process. It's just an overlay. So we're suggesting to you, and you will see more on Wednesday night, that we are pulling and suggesting some funding to do some long overdue facility improvements here in town. Uh, so that is going to be an ARPA piece that will impact this fiscal year. But we are also looking to have impact next fiscal year and possibly a little bit in that following fiscal year in order to do as much as we can with these dollars. So the infrastructure, the physical infrastructure, whether it be sidewalks, school driveways, boilers, roof replacements, you know, lavatory, uh, improvements, bathrooms and parks, playground improvements, all of that is strategic in terms of how we're approaching the capital improvement plan. And you will see on Wednesday night as part of our proposal, uh, John Wilcox made a comment today during our discussions, which I think was very salient, in that the best thing that we can do for our taxpayers is ensure that these projects get done for the security and safety of the residents, but also that we do it in a financial responsible way to lower the impact of taxation on those same residents. So that's going to be one of those uses for ARPA that is going to be very strategic, again, as we discuss how to construct the budget for July 1st. Thank you. Again, I'm 100 percent to uh, uh, I know Councilor Wedwick was involved with this last time, too, but we definitely need to do something for, for those people. Thank you. OK, thank you. All right. Any other questions? All right. Next, town attorney report. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. We were asked to review what steps would need to be taken to set up a standalone water pollution control authority, a WPCA. And so the town manager asked me to present this in public to you tonight. Uh, from a legal perspective, it's really pretty simple. It's basically following the statute, and I'll describe that briefly. Um, from a human perspective, it's going to require some heavy lifting, some analysis, some review, a subcommittee, a public hearing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Because uh, pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 7 246, there are two methods by which the town or any municipality can have a WPCA. Um, you may have the legislative body serve as the WPCA, which is what Enfield has done. Now, uh, when we were asked to research this, we went through our archives. We were also asked in 2018 to research this, and I'm not sure why it didn't get off the ground at that point, but we had given the, the same opinion that um, basically, uh, if you don't want to have the council as the legislative body be the WPCA, you may create a new board or commission to be designated as the WPCA, which is what many municipalities do. In order to do that, you'd need to pass an ordinance, which would require a public hearing. And in that ordinance, you would specify the number of members, 
I would suggest you don't want um, 11 or 9, um, maybe 5 or something like that. Um, you'd uh, designate whether there is compensation, if any, for those uh, WPCA commissioners. You would designate in that ordinance whether they are elected on the ballot or appointed. You would designate the method of appointment and removal and the terms of office. So obviously, to come up with a reasonable plan, you'd want a subcommittee, I think. So it's a simple matter, uh, Mr. Mayor, as you've indicated, you're looking at subcommittees, maybe eliminating one. Well, you have room now for a new one. <laughs> Thank you, Attorney Talbert. <laughs> you would also need, we have an ordinance, uh, part of the code, uh, Enfield Town Code 86-51, um, establishes that the legislative council, the town council, is the WPCA, you would need to amend that. So you need to pass an ordinance, delete or modify an ordinance, appoint a subcommittee, do all the heavy lifting, and come back, and at some point, you could get a standalone WPCA. Great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> Councilor Ludwig. So would the standalone committee have taxing authority? If the answer is yes, then I'm absolutely against this. It would have all the authority all right. that a WPCA would have. Right. I mean, from some perspective, we were in a $4 million deficit back, I think, in 17, 18 in the SOAR. And the council, both councils managed it through with staff. And now we're in a $2.5 million, I believe. Certainly, John is here to keep me honest. Surplus. And we did it over a number of years working with staff and consultant. We actually paid the town back that the that he borrowed from the town. The town now is fully whole. So again, you're going to give taxing authority to another board, which is always the ruse of government when you create another layer of government. And you know, and, and I'm sorry, I, I'm if that's where we're going to go, I'm again, I want to be up front against it. We get elected for better or worse to be able to handle these tough decisions. And yes, we're not all experts on everything, but that's 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 why you run for office, and that's why you don't run for office. So I, I got to be upfront. If there's, if we're giving away taxing authority to another government entity, uh, I'm sorry. I, 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 we can talk about. For me, I'll just be upfront that I don't think it's a good idea. And I, I don't know. We, we have too many layers of government to begin with, in my opinion. And I just don't think this is the right. Just my opinion. You, you, know, you work for the entire council, but just don't think this is the way to go. Yeah. And I why have... wouldn't? Sorry. Why wouldn't we need a yeah. charter com commission committee if we're going to have develop another taxing authority? Well, I, I'm I, I'm not sure about the taxing authority. That that would require a little more research. But what I can tell you is, uh, you don't require charter reform to do this. Uh, pursuant to General Statute 7-246, you just uh, pass an ordinance. I'm sure there are pros and cons. I would think that the subcommittee would want to hear from experts. I we did some research looking around the state. You have regional water authorities. You have um, many municipalities with their own uh, WPCA. I think the argument in favor is that you have a smaller group with expertise. Those commissioners develop an expertise in wastewater management, um, clean water, that type of thing. Whereas this body, you're already spread pretty thin. Um, so I think there is an argument uh, in favor of having a very discreet, smaller group that manages the WPCA. Uh, there may be counter arguments, and that could be fleshed out uh, through a subcommittee and a public hearing that you'd have on the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Greatly appreciate that. If you could, uh, uh, Attorney Talberg, just check on that taxing authority. All right. Yes, uh, sir, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, will do. Knowing that many towns have their own separate uh, commission, um, I'm sure that's pretty easy to find. We'll do. We'll follow up on that. Okay, well, th thank you very much. Uh, yes. Yeah. I just um, I just want Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I just think that our uh, water pollution controls and our sewers are like the most important public service. One of the most important public services. And I don't want to see us ever get into a place again where we're so far behind that we have to raise our fees. Um, so I think it's it's very important that that we at least look look into this uh, in a subcommittee. And I'm um, you know definitely in favor of it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Santanella. Uh, through the mayor to the town attorney. So can we have some examples of what other towns are doing and how they construct, whether they have 
uh, a board of experts but retain the taxing authority for the legislative body or does it all have to be given away or are we going to have some opportunity to, to see what the variety of options are or is it simply it stays the town council or it goes to a independent WPCA and the taxing authority moves over to them? Um, I can get you a more formal answer on the taxing question. Um, and we can do a survey of other other municipalities and how they handle that. Councilor Santanella, I don't have that handy here this no, evening. No, I'm not but, asking for yeah. it right now. I'm just asking if that would be part of the process because I, I I know that there's a number of different ways that they're organized and I I I honestly am not familiar with the different levels of organization. We will get you something more detailed in right. writing. Thank uh, you. At our uh, at our earliest opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Attorney Talbert. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, next report of any special committees of the council. Any any reports this week? Sensing none. Uh, Twelve. There's old no old business. Uh, new business. Thirteen A, B, C, D. There are none. Uh, consent agenda. Fourteen A. Discussion resolution. Uh, this is under the consent agenda. The resolution authorizing the town manager to submit a targeted grant application and enter into agreement with the Connecticut State Library and New Vision Systems Corporation for the Historic Documents Preservation Grant Program for year 2023. Um, uh, town manager, uh, anything to add, uh, Ellen? Anything to add to this? Okay. Sense, sensing none. Uh, any discussion from anyone? Uh, all in favor of approving the consent agenda by show of hands. All in favor? You need to do a second. Well, I was going to do it oh, separate. Okay. Yeah, I was going to just do it separate. Okay. okay. All right. So eight in favor, uh, none against, no abstentions. And the second one is the resolution to abate interest on the motor vehicle tax. Um, any questions on this one? Okay. Uh, all in favor of approving the consent agenda number two uh, by raise of hands. Uh, we have eight in favor, uh, none against, no abstentions. All right. Next is appointments, uh, town council. The first one that we will be dealing with tonight is the Connecticut Water Company Advisory Council uh, Enfield representatives. A vacancy exists due to a resignation and replacement would be until January 1st, 2024. Do I have a nomination? Do I have a nomination? Uh, Councillor Pisner? I'm trying to find it. I, nobody else raised their hand. Um, we're doing Should the be. Connecticut water, correct? All right, Ann. Okay, Ann Whitney. Okay, so I'd like to nominate Ann Whitney Collins. Uh, so Councillor Ludwig, second. Uh, Councillor Despard. Are there any other nominations? Nomination okay, second. and Councillor Santanello. All right, by show of hands, all in favor? Any against? No abstentions. Eight in favor? No, uh, no oppositions, no abstentions. Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Ann Collins? Mayor Crisati? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. Councilor Finger? Four. Councilor Ludwick? Four. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Pisner? Four. And Councilor Santanella? Four. That's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, next, the Hazardville Water Company Advisory Council, uh, Enfield Representative. The term of office of Andrew Urbinowitz expired on January 1st, 2018. Replacement would be until January 1st, 2024. Do I have a nomination? Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. I'd like to nominate John Cox. And a second, Councillor Despard. Uh, are there any other nominations? Do I have a motion? To close, Councillor Finger, second. second. Councillor Despard. Second. All right, by by a show of hands, all in favor? Okay, there's no oppositions, no abstentions. Uh, eight in favor? And Sheila, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Sakala. John Cox. 
Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. So, uh, item C on the agenda, town manager appointed, council approved, there are none. And P and Z commission appointed, council approved, there are none. Moving on to the resolution, discussion resolution. The resolution authorizing the town manager to sign the memorandum of understanding with the Connecticut Urban Forest Council. Whereas the town has submitted to the Connecticut Urban Forest Council a grant application under the Urban Forestry Climate Change Grant Program for a project entitled Reducing the Effects of Changing Climate, Increasing Urban Canopy in Thompsonville to Increase the Urban Canopy Along High Street and Central Avenue. Whereas the Town and the Connecticut Urban Forest Council will enter into the Memorandum of Understanding whereby the Connecticut Urban Forest Council hereby agrees to provide financial assistance to the town for the project in the form of the Urban Forestry Climate Change Grant in the amount not to exceed $18,972. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Enfield Town Council authorizes the town manager to sign the Memorandum of Understanding with the Connecticut Urban Forest Council, prepared by Nelson Tereso, Director of Economic and Community Development, uh, date prepared March 24th, 2022. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Second. Second, Councillor Santanella. Uh, any questions or discussions? <laughs> uh, Councillor Finger. These trees that are being planted right on High Street, are they going in that little tree belt between the curbing and the sidewalks? Do we know? Because everybody knows what happens when you put trees with roots that grow in areas like that. They push up the sidewalks, and those are brand new sidewalks up that area. You know, I hate to see something like that happen. You know, that's a safety issue. If you go in front of Coronas, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You know, I don't mind the trees. I love trees. Um, but we got to think about where they, where they get planted. Because maybe 10 years from now, they're going to be, like I said, pushing up sidewalks or whatever the case may be. Thank you. That's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Um, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. That's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, F, discussion resolution request for transfer of funds for the Connecticut Urban Forest Council grant $18,972. Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made to the Urban Forestry Climate Change Grant other professional services, $18,972 from the Urban Forestry Climate Change Grant. Uh, miscellaneous state revenue in the amount of $18,972 certification. I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of March 25th, 2022. John A. Wilcox, Director of Finance, approved by Ellen Zapposasso, the town manager, uh, March 30th, 2022. So moved. Uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second, uh, Councillor Finger. Uh, any discussion? Sensing none. Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. G. Discussion resolution the request for transfer of. of ARPA funds for the design services for Town Farm Road multi-use path, $80,000. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made uh, to COVID-19 fund, Town Farm Road bike path, 
Other professional services, $80,000 from COVID-19 fund. The revenue grants COVID, the federal $80,000 certification. I hereby certify that the above stated funds are available as of March 30th, 2022. John A. Wilcox, Director of Finance and approved by Ellen Zapposasu, the town manager, is March 30th, 2022. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor, uh, Sakala, the second, second by Councillor Santanella. Any discussions or questions? Yes. So Councillor Ludwig. Uh, through the mayor to the town manager, did we receive the 800000 already? Right? Was, was that last year? That's in our budget? Is that correct? Uh, yes. The sequence of events for this particular grant, which does not have any local budget impact, it's uh, the only thing that we are paying for, which we've now sourced for ARPA funds, is design. But this was originally awarded in September 2020. We received the first review for the project on July 30th, 2021. Then we received comments back late November. We sent new cost estimates uh, to the state in November of 2021. And then we received the approval for the cost estimate in mid-December. And then the commitment to fund letter came in February. So that's why we're now moving to this next phase for the actual design cost. So once the design's done, does the town go to bid or do we go? does the state go to bid for that project, right? Because I think the, the original goal is to start that in the fall of 2022. Is that still? That is our goal, which is goal. why we're trying to fast track this by using ARPA dollars for the design. Town, did the town control the bid or the state? I believe that this is a lots of grant, so it would be going through our Council of Governments. Right, okay, that's worth it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Oh, oh, excuse me. I am sorry. You, you just yeah. asked me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Councilor Mayor. Councilor Despard. Uh, mm. I'm just, just a huge fan of this uh, this project and things like it. I think we have a, a real recreation potential here uh, in Enfield, and this sort of taps into it. Um, and then, especially with the distracted driving that we have, it's becoming uh, less safe to bike and walk on roadways. So um, just love to see this and hope to see more stuff like this. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, H, discussion resolution, resolution appointing an alternate to the Capital Region Council of Governments. Whereas the town of Enfield wishes to appoint an alternate to the Capital Region Council of Governments, CROG, and whereas CROG by law state that an alternate may be designated by the town's appointing authority when the chief elected official is unable to attend the CROG policy board meeting, and whereas Ellen Zapusasu is qualified to represent the town's interest at CROG meetings, now therefore it be resolved that the town of Enfield appoints Ellen Zapusasu as an alter, as an alternate to the CROG policy board. Yes. Councillor Finger. Second. And his second, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Um, Sorry. Yes. Qu yeah. Qu just curious. So, will the alternate, have, if you're not, will the, the alternate have voting authority for the council at these meetings? I believe that the alternate would have voting. Uh, listen, yeah. I'm not, not in personal, but I think this should be an elected official who's an alternate. Just my opinion. I'm sorry when it comes to voting for the members of the council. It should be someone who's elected, in my opinion. That's all. Sorry, I'm just nope. not being pro, but nope. that's what, the only thing I can have a concern with. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Against. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Against. Councilor Santanella. Four. That's eight in favor, two against, and no abstentions. I mean, six in favor, I'm sorry, excuse me. Six in favor, two against, and no abstentions. Okay, I discussion resolution, resolution to temporarily waive education qualification of the current accountant job description in the finance department. 
Resolve that in accordance with Chapter 7, Section 2 of the Town Charter, the Enfield Town Council does hereby temporarily waive the educational requirement in the accountant job description. Date submitted March 25th, 2022, submitted by Steve Belinda, Human Resources Director. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second by Councillor Despard. Uh, discussions, questions, Councillor Pisner. Okay, I just have one question. I think it's great that we're taking somebody and, and moving them a lateral move within that department. Um, but I know she is a union employee at this time. That position will maintain. I know some people in finance aren't union. So can you clarify, is she going to maintain in the union or not? Sure. She's currently in one union, the clerical union. Uh, she will abandon that position, and then she will be going to a different union, which is the professional and technical union. Um, I did talk to the president of that union, and they have no problem with this waiver. Okay, and it's it's just a temporary waiver, and you'd have to come before us if we were going to do this again for Correct. I put a time limit on this waiver because it's contingent upon her being successful in getting her master's degree, which is scheduled for August of this year. But um, we went out to the marketplace three times. We could not fill this position, and government keeps going, and sometimes we're building this plane as we're flying it. No. So... <laughs> Like I said, I think it's great. I want to see more people internally get moved up. And, you know, if she's been with us for five plus years, that shows me she's going to stay. And I understand the market we're in. So I think it's wonderful. Um, I just had a question on that union piece of it, mm -hmm. because, like I said, I know some of the people in our payroll finance are not part of a union. Uh, so I And I also wanted to add that this is going to be absorbed within the current um, budget. There's no cost impact at the time. That was a question you answered previous for me. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate okay. that. Councilor Ludwig. Again, it's just, it's just the way the resolution's written. So I just want to be clear. So I read your, the cover letter, and it says the, she, the individual needs a bachelor's degree. And you're saying the individual's going for a master's. So I'm assuming the individual already has a bachelor's degree. So why are we waiting? Why are we waiving if, she, if the individual already the needs in, The individual accounting. does not have a bachelor's degree in accounting. Yeah. But it says in all right, it says major course of work in business. It's not in business either. Okay, so the, so the bat, so the so the master degree takes it over. That's so again, if they're going from one unit to another, isn't there even though there's no budgetary impact, isn't there a change in line item, and shouldn't that be in the resolution, right? Because if the salary's in one union, I'm assuming it's in a different line item, then it's going to another union that's a different line item. But shouldn't that be in it here, the transfer? That, there's no need to transfer. There's already, which that line item is already funded. I, I understand, but isn't it going from one line item to another? No, that line item is still going to stay the same for that position. But, but the individual is getting a bump, a salary increase. As identified in the line item. Right, well, that's what should be in resolution. But there's no transfer of funds. All right. I don't know. The person's transferring, but not necessarily... The current position is funded. Right, no, I got it. But didn't, the didn't you recommend using some of this money prior in another? True, but we did not exhaust that money. So, so it'd be nice, how much money is left after this in that line item? Um, Twenty-seven thousand three hundred and seventy-five dollars. So that include the transfer that's already done, and then this one Correct. as well. It's not just the base salary; it's also the insurance. I, and I get all that. Yeah, yeah. So that's the the uh, net effect is still the surplus of twenty-seven thousand. Okay. Right, thank Keep you. in mind, we're doing this hey, later on in the year, so it's only an impact of a few months. I, thank you uh, for your explanation, Steve. No, yes, I think Councillor Pisner. I think what Councillor Ludwig is saying is that it would be nice for our eyes to see those numbers, so that I didn't have to email today to get those numbers. So moving forward, if if if. In the resolutions, we can see exactly if there is a budget, even if there's not a budget impact, to see what those those salaries are going to be and what the changes are. That I, I just think visually it would be it would be better. Understood. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Finger. Through the mayor to uh, Mr. Belinda. So if she's leaving uh, one union and going into another. Now, one of the uh, conditions is she has to get this master's degree. What if, what if, not saying she will, but what if she fails? I mean, there's no nothing in her saying that she can go back to her job. That's the risk she assumes by leaving this position to go. So she would then have no job. It depends on, let's see, would it be past 30 days? Well, she's, she's assuming this risk. Technically, she would have no job. Correct. Okay. But she has a 3.84 GPA. She's comfortable. She's, um, 
Uh, what happens with her old job, the one that she's leaving? The road job? Her old. Oh, oh. we're going to proceed and fill it as we normally do any other vacant position. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakawa. Four. Mayor Kusadi. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. It's eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Jay, uh, discussion resolution, the resolution authorizing the town manager to sign a lease agreement with Collins Powder Hill Farm. Collins Powder, whereas Collins Powder Hill Farm LLC wishes to lease for the 2022 growing season approximately 11 acres of town-owned land located on the northeast corner of 77 Town Farm Road, commonly known as the Town of Enfield Transfer Station property shown in the Enfield Land Record Books Book of Maps, Volume 226, pages 3,321 through 3,324, and whereas the Collins Powder Hill Farm LLC has previously leased this property for the 2017, 18, 19, 20, and 21 growing seasons. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the town manager is empowered to enter into the attached lease agreement in the name and on behalf of the town of Enfield with Collins Powder Hill Farm LLC, prepared by the town attorney's office, date prepared March 28, 2022. So moved. Councillor Finger. Second. Second, Councillor Despard. Uh, discussions? And comment? Comment. Councillor, uh, excuse me, Deputy Mayor Scala. Oh, okay. I apologize. So the new one does not have his name on it. Okay. So we're good. Never mind. I'm looking at my old one. Mm. We're good. Yeah, so I was um, reading the new yeah. one. I know. You're on it. You're darn right. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I'm uh, looking at so, Yes. And Councillor and, Santanella, yeah. I'm sorry. So the years are also different on I'm, I'm sorry i just don't know which one of these not that it really matters so but i just an, want to make sure i have a the updated one it was placed at your the yeah. dais placed tonight that, dated the 2022 dais, this is an annual lease so there is just yep. a the thank date you. didn't get updated before yep. the packet went out thank you yep i did something right <laughs> no no just just kidding all right uh any discussions on this? Sensing that Sheila, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Item K, discussion resolution, the resolution regarding referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission for the proposed transfer of properties. Whereas the town of Enfield has received a request from the owners of 92 Main Street, the Salas Brothers LLC, to acquire a portion of two abutting town-owned properties. Whereas the town council must refer this proposed transaction to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a report in conformance with the requirements of the Connecticut General Statute S8-24. Now, therefore, be resolved that the proposed transfer of properties described above be referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of the Connecticut General Statute S8-24, prepared by Director of Planning, um, date prepared March 31st, 2022. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second, Councillor Despard. <laughs> Councillor Mangini, third, Councillor Desnow. Go ahead. Uh, uh, Councillor uh, Ludwig. So just curious, I saw the article in the paper where you were quoted, Attorney Talberg. Um, just curious, so I just want to confirm before, you know, we move forward. I mean, again, I, I, I could be wrong, but don't we generally know what we're going to do with those properties, whether we're going to sell it, we're going to lease it before we refer it to planning and zoning? Maybe I'm wrong, and if I am, I'm, I'll be the first to admit it, but I thought we generally would have a discussion what we want to do with those properties. But my question is, can, can you confirm before that there is no ongoing lawsuit and that there was no, I think your quote in the paper was you were, there was no settlement. Is that correct for the record? That's correct. There's no pending litigation. There was no settlement. Okay. 
It's unrelated. Uh, past history has nothing to do with this. Well, again, it, it does. But, I mean, if we're, someone's suing us, I'm not sure why we would, you know, sell them a piece of property. Uh, there is no litigation. Um, it really does have, have no bearing on this. There were prior claims, but has nothing to do with this real estate. My understanding is that the title to the land, there's even a question of whether the town owns it Correct. or not. There's a right. real title question. Right. So that's why I'm just, so why are we referring us to planning zoning if we don't have that resolved yet? Um, the 824 uh, referral is required by statute. I get that. But I'm just saying, why are we doing it if we don't even know if we own the property? I think a, re a referral is required regardless of whether it's a lease or a sale. It's for any acquisition or disposal of property. So we're just trying to fast track this as well based on their forensic title search and the fact that he'd like to move forward with the development. So what we're really doing is buying a couple of weeks so that the planning and zoning can take this up on an agenda while a committee and or the town council as a committee of the whole decide what the next steps are for this particular parcel. It doesn't just involve the potential of town owned land or not town owned land, but there's also a private party involved yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's extremely complicated. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sheila, roll call, please. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. Councilor Ludwick. Four. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Okay, th thank you. Uh, there's not, nothing under miscellaneous 16 public communications. Uh, any person wishing to speak in front of the council? And if you are, please state your name and address for the record. We ask you to refrain from any personalities, just like we stated at the beginning of the meeting. Is there anybody who would like to speak in front of the council? Uh, councilor communications are closed. Or excuse me, public communications are closed. And uh, councilor communications, any final comments are actually... I have one comment that, that I just want to mention. Okay, uh, April 23rd is the uh, Enfield Clean Sweep put on by the Enfield Beautification Committee and uh, urging all residents to come on out and participate and picking up and uh, certain areas here in, in, in the town of Enfield. Uh, and I think it's a good community civic engagement involvement. So. Uh, uh, over to the town manager. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to just draw your attention to agenda item B1. Was that an unintentional skip or are you saving that for a future meeting? Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't think that was in our packet, B1. I didn't see the paperwork for B1. I think it was because it was a reappointment that there wasn't accompanying. The, yeah. I, I looked at that, but I didn't Yeah. Oh. Right. It's not highlighted. I know we talked about it in leadership, but it wasn't highlighted on this. Okay. So I would yeah. urge recommendation to approve. Um, I don't believe that he had access technology-wise to fill uh, out an application. Right. So I think that's why we put it on the agenda. And I apologize for not communicating that ahead no, of time. That That's, that's quite all right. Um, do we have a... Um, a nomination, or it's a reappointment, so uh, can we just do an agreement? You have to move, to you have to move yeah. Okay. Move All right, do I have a motion to move it to miscellaneous? Motion. Uh, second by Councillor Despard. All right. So here we are, the Patriot Award Committee, the term of office of Ignatius Miniscalco expired on 731-2021. Reappointment would be till 731-2023. Uh, do I have a motion to accept? Accept. Okay. Uh, Councillor Pisner. Uh, second, Councillor Santanella. Uh, all in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. Eight in favor. Uh, Sheila, roll call. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Mr. Menescalco. Mayor Casati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Eight in favor, none against, and no abstentions. 
All right. Well, well th thank you very much. Uh, are there any other comments from anyone? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Uh, Councillor Finger, Councillor Pisner. I want to thank you, everyone, for uh, oh, all in favor of, uh, okay, eight in favor. Meeting is adjourned. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Take care.